Hello, Ancestry and DNA fans out there on YouTube. Uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Otzi. And you may have remembered hearing that name back in the news um, somewhere about 19 years ago. It's hard to believe it's been 19 years since they found uh, Otzi, also called the Iceman. Uh, he lived between 3400 and 3100 BCE, uh, somewhere around 5,000 years ago. Uh, he was found in September of 1991 in the Otzio Alps, which is a mountain range in the uh, central eastern Alps uh, in Italy, the state of Tyrol in southern Austria and uh, south Tyrol in northern Italy. So it's right along the border of those two countries. Uh, he was found in ice by some hikers uh, right there on the uh, Austrian-Italian border and uh, he's been studied pretty significantly ever since for his DNA um, scientists learning what they could about this ice man that lived so many years ago and there hasn't been many found you know there's been probably I would say maybe 20 to 25 notable excavations of people from you know thousands of years ago uh, right here under genetic analysis it says Otzi's full genome has been sequenced the report was published back in 2012 and of course as each uh, year passes, DNA gets better. So this can only get better as far as uh, analysis and things like that. But the Y chromosome, which is the male line of DNA uh, belonging to Otzi, ended up to be in what's called a haplogroup of G. And that's one of the first few haplogroups that moved out of Africa and across and eventually uh, into Europe and the Middle East and places like that. So um, it goes on to say here that uh, G is defined by several uh, SNPs, M201, P287, P15, L223, and L91. So those are just subgroups of the G M201 uh, designation. And basically that's where this um, Iceman was from. You know, what group of people he traveled with, in other words. And it just so happens that my haplogroup is the same, GM201. So I'm going to go on to our next part of this right now. And I go over to my haplogroup reading and show you that. Okay, I just loaded up my familytreedna.com site here which I partook in a Y-DNA test, uh, 37 markers. You can go uh, much further than that. Right now they offer a test that goes, uh, they call it the big Y test. Um, prior to that it was uh, a level of Y111, Y111, and now they offer this test uh, to give you more matches exactly where you're where you're from. Here's my paternal Y-DNA haplogroup right here, GM201. And when you take this test, um, it'll give you variants that you may be related to. And you, of course, you have to take a higher test to get more of these variants to be matched. Um, but that's very interesting that my uh, haplogroup matches Otzi's 
and uh, GM201. So, very interesting there. And here's some of the matches that I've had over um, the several years that I've been tested here with Family Tree DNA. I think it's been probably about five years, and I slowly am getting more matches over time. Uh, but only a couple in the, and one specifically, in the 37 marker um, category. And that's a what's called a distance of negative 3. So it's not, not something that's going to be exact for me. So for now, my Y-DNA test hasn't proved too good except for getting my haplogroup. I'm going to jump back to Otzi for just a moment. And the interesting thing about Otzi is, with me, this little number right here, 2% Italian. And this is the only service that really uh, reports this 2% Italian on my DNA. If we go ahead and look at this, around Austria, Switzerland, France, the Alps. Um, it's right in this area right here where Otzi was located. So, never know, 2%, which is a very, very small amount, may go back many years. I don't really have any good relatives to match this to and now I'm going to jump over to another service that had me thinking of a possible uh, Otzi connection as well. I just signed back into my 23andMe account. Now I had uploaded my DNA uh, profile from Ancestry to the 23andMe site. I never submitted a brand new test even though in a previous video, I had said that I am going to do that at some time, probably over the winter months. But I was just looking at this the other day. And yes, it got the British and Irish just about right on for me as far as uh, percentage-wise. But then I read down a little bit further and 23andMe is really the only service that's reporting a French and German uh, match with me at 8.1%. And if I go to this certain section, it's telling me it's province, the Alps. And that's the Alps that is on the France side of Italy, right down here. Now you remember that the Austria borderline with Italy is up here. But that's not the most interesting thing to me about this specifically. It was this 0.1%. And right now it's saying that it's unassigned. So... What it's saying is it can't really come to a conclusion about what that may be. So it, it could be an old DNA type of uh, reading from many, many years ago. Uh, it, all these different services interpret your DNA differently. So... Well, that's an interesting concept there. So all this comes back to Otzi, the Iceman, and here's a picture of what he may have looked like. Now, I don't know if that's me, but certainly um, somebody could be related to this gentleman, and... Let's face it, there's probably millions of 
people, if not, you know, thousands of people that have the same haplogroup, but I think it significantly points to the possibility that um, this gentleman may have been with relatives of mine from up to 5,000 years ago. That's pretty interesting to, uh, to think of that in those terms, being that he has the same haplogroup. All right, well, I'm going to keep stumbling upon this uh, subject for a while here, and that's what the interesting thing about studying your DNA does for you. It uh, makes you question, you know, who you may be related to, um, not only your great-grandparents and their parents and five generations ago, but how about thousands of years ago? Think of it in those terms. So it opens it up a little bit more broadly for you and uh, makes it even a little bit more fun, in my opinion. All right, well, thanks for listening to this video. Don't forget, hit like and subscribe. I'll be making more of these videos for you to listen to. Thanks, everyone. Take care.